Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. This week, we talk about one of the questions I've gotten an awful lot, where you've lived in your house for a little while and you wish you had another bathroom or maybe even a half bath that would be convenient for your guests that are over at your house. But how do you put a toilet in where there's no plumbing and no way to get plumbing there? I've done it many, many times. We'll share with you how you have to break out the jackhammer every now and then. Yeah, depending on what kind of foundation you have in your house, it could be a relatively easy job That's or right. an extremely yeah. difficult job, right? Yeah. That's where one of the and advantages of being up on piers like that when you're that's talking right. about plumbing, routing, and things like that still could be uh, you know, a, a job, but uh, we'll tell you what you need to do if you're uh, having to deal with a concrete slab on that. You just have to convince Danny to climb under your house. That's the <laughs> that's toughest right, part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're going to talk to a homeowner who has an antique clawfoot tub that has seen better days. It's, it's still working well, but it's stained and it's not quite as white as it used to be. So we're going to share some tips on how to brighten that up so it looks a little better. Boy, I've seen a lot of people. It seems like everybody loves those tubs to the point that I had a customer one time that bought a brand new one. Brand, right. And you don't hear that very much. Brand new cast iron candy apple red Whoa. with gold claw feet on it. Was he living in Vegas? Nope. They uh, oh. they were living um, in uh, Mobile, Alabama, in a historic district. And, of course, the 459-pound um, uh, tub had to be carried up a flight of stairs oh because the stairs, the uh, bathroom renovation was upstairs. So, yeah, I, we know all about the, those tubs. My back's hurting just thinking about it right now. <laughs> and where we suggest if you're going to buy paint, especially exterior paint, buy the best grade paint you yep. can find. Mm-hmm. Now, it's relatively expensive, so you want to make sure you use every drop of that paint. But what do you do? How do you seal a partially filled can of paint. Well, I've got a simple solution that'll tell you how you can seal a half-filled can of paint so when you go to use it next time, the paint will be nice and fresh. Hey, we're glad you're with us, so let's get started. Now, have you ever had a situation where you really wish you had an additional bathroom? You know, a lot of times you may have you know, a situation where I just wish I had a bathroom here, but it's really hard to figure out what to do and how you can get that toilet drain in. Well, that's what John Paul is facing right now down in Florida. John Paul, how you doing? Great. Thanks for having me, Danny. Absolutely. Glad to glad to have you. And uh, so I understand that you um, have a laundry room area it's adjacent to, I think, the pool area. And how convenient would it be to have a, a tub or, or a uh, bathroom facility there? Anytime you have a, have a pool, a lot of times people forget about that. But um, you're trying to see if you can uh, accomplish that, I understand. Yeah, so we have a the, the laundry room has an exterior door that leads directly to the pool area. Mm-hmm. Um, no other bathrooms in the house had that access. Um, so, you know, wet clothes and, and swimsuits have to track through the home. So this would be an awesome pool bathroom, but the only problem, no toilet drain. So with my lack of limited plumbing knowledge, really the only real solution I can think is adding a toilet drain. <laughs> but I was thinking maybe there's some sort of, you know, outside-the-box kind of creative way um, – to have a bathroom there without breaking the bank. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the photos now. I appreciate you sending those. I see the washer and dryer, traditional washer and dryer, sitting side by side. So that's taking up approximately five foot by three foot area. Then you have a little pantry closet there, an overflow pantry. I see. Um, the first of all, um, to get a a toilet in there. You know, you need about a three by five area, so you know maybe a tad smaller than that that you can get by with. So, um, the first issue would be the space there, because what I'm afraid of is you would have to go with a new configuration on that washer and dryer, somewhat of a a stacked washer and dryer, that would then create the space that you would need by reconfiguring the closet to create the space for the the toilet room or the water closet. Does that does that make sense? What I'm saying there. Yeah, it does. Okay. All right, so 
if you're willing to do that, which um, I'll have to say would be a pretty significant investment because, boy, they're sure proud of those stacked washer and dryers. Uh, gr the great space savers, very convenient, use them a lot in condos and, and closed-in areas, but they, they are fairly expensive. But, of course, you can sell these these um, units for a little bit of money as well. But then the really the um, only way now, – now there's – um, and, and, and Joe, you can chime in on this in just a second. I know in basement situations, there's certain types of toilets that will, um, w you know, work on the gravity situ. you know. Um, in, in, it has in, a pump in, in it. Uh, yeah. yeah, that has a pump in them. But the only way I know here to do it in a traditional sense that you can protect your investment is really to um, jackhammer out um, that floor. But so the key then is right outside this door I assume there's concrete that leads right up to your swimming pool. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's that's the problem. Is that you've got to get that? They'll, they'll probably require a four inch line that's trenched. You'll have to go down about sixteen inches in the area where your toilet's going to go, and then trench that all the way out through your footing. And then the challenge then will be once you get outside, the closest direction to your um, your sewer line. Do you have a septic tank or do you have city sewage? City sewage. Okay. So that means you're most likely going to be having to go all the way around the house. That's where it starts getting to be very cost prohibitive. Um, Joe, any, any thoughts that you'd have uh, beyond that? Yeah, this is this is a bit of a challenge, John Paul. Uh, is there another bathroom relatively close by to where this is? I mean, obvious, I guess there isn't, otherwise you wouldn't need one. But is there some way to tap into an existing drain line? I don't know if the, you probably couldn't use the washer drain line, but because you're on, I assume you're on a slab, as Danny said, you have to chop up a lot of concrete to run this line. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, it's it's not close to any other bathroom. Um, it is it is uh, adjacent on the other side of the laundry room. Um, there's another door that leads right. into the kitchen. So it is close okay. to the kitchen, but no other bathroom. Yeah. Um, the, the toilet Danny was mentioning that they um, they sell for basement bathrooms. It's built up on a little bit of a platform for lack of a better like word, a, a throne a it's on a it's on a throne <laughs> they're yeah. all thrones yeah <laughs> but this one's built up on a little pedestal and there's a pump underneath it and because it, obviously if you're in the basement you have to pump the waste up to get to the drain line ordinarily now i don't know how that would help you but um that that would that's another option but if you don't have the space for the toilet then that that then it doesn't matter what i mean unless you use a composting toilet which i don't know if you'd even consider that but um you know which doesn't need any hookup at all then, um, you know, I'm not sure what your option would be that you'd actually have room. You'd have to sacrifice that pantry area and maybe you can squeeze in a little, you know, composting toilet. And I'll tell you what I would probably. Yeah, I'll out. tell you what I would probably try there just, j just so that you're making sure that you exhaust all um, easier ways of doing it. I would call one of your local plumbing supply places and say, hey, look, I'm looking for a, remo for a plumbing contractor that does a lot of remodeling work. They'll, know, they'll be able to rec recommend someone that traditionally does a lot of residential remodeling. I would get them out there. Those guys are pretty innovative, and they may be able to look at a certain way of doing things. Uh, you might even be able to go out through your pool and turn and then cover that area with a little bit of a, like a brick roll lock to make it a decorative thing. But it's all about the drain. Water lines, easy to get to. You can get those through your washer and dryer area, but that drain line will be the key thing. That's what I would do. I would try to get a, a pro out there and see if they can recommend something on site there. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Our pleasure. Thank you a lot. That's one of those challenges a lot of people have, but I'll tell you, there's you cannot put a two-inch line. You can't tie into uh, an existing drain. There's just about no way to do it other than uh, do, um, doing that with the, uh, the jackhammer. And a lot of times that seems, ex you know, like a lot of work, and it is a fair amount of work, but if you cut a 12-inch slot with a um, rent-a-saw, cut the slot, then take that jackhammer, it takes a good long day, but you can get it all out of the way, and you're, and you're laying that plumbing. But very important thing to have a professional do that. At this point, John Paul might be thinking, maybe I don't need a toilet. Yeah, yet. I'm thinking <laughs> that too. I think you, you just said, kids, wipe your feet and go to the other bathroom there. Hey, right now it's time for our Best New Product segment brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Doing. If you've ever battled ants in your house, you know what a pain it is to get rid of those things. Spraying pesticides on them may take care of the ones that you can see, but they'll come back again because there's always more that you don't see. 
Terra multi-surface liquid ant baits are specifically designed to kill all common household ants. Because it's a bait, it works slowly, allowing those worker ants to consume it and carry it back to the colony where it eventually will kill all of the ants. So you get rid of the ants you see and the ones you don't. The really cool thing about these bait stations is that you can place them almost anywhere in the house because of their convenient multi-surface application. You can lay them flat on a horizontal surface or you can adhere them to vertical surfaces with the included adhesive strips. Now this gets the bait stations as close to ant activity as possible and keeps them out of reach for children and pets. Now the stations also have a discrete two color design that will help blend in with all the rest of the decor so you won't even notice it's there. Just simply choose the color that matches the location the very best and apply the adhesive strip to the opposite sides. Now you can find out a lot more about this by going to Home Depot.com and check out Terra Multi-Surface Liquid Ant Bait. It's that time of the year that you'll see quite a few of those things running around. They're usually yeah. looking for water, Danny. That's right. right. Yeah, they love the some moisture. Kind of moisture. And uh, that's a, a lot of times we talk about, um, like uh, even outside where you have gutters that are clogged and they back up and they introduce water into the soffit or overhang area of the home. Almost inevitably, when you tear that out, here comes the ant. Sometimes a pretty big carpenter type ants too that right. can uh, yeah. cause a lot of damage. But right now we're going to go and see if we can help Ray. Ray is in New York uh, talking about claw foot bathtubs. Ray, welcome to the show. Hi, uh, thank you for taking our call. Absolutely. Um, my wife has been trying to get our claw foot tub back to its more original whiteness. Uh -huh. Our water is really hard here, and uh, the water softener has a hard job keeping up with keeping the uh, iron out of it. And um, she's got it down to uh, kind of a gray off white, but is there anything? more she can do to uh, get it more white without uh, ruining the surface. Yeah, well, because of it being an older tub like that, um, sometimes that finish just gradually wears off, and certainly the iron doesn't help. And of course, uh, one product, uh, Joe, what is that? Iron away? Is that what that is? That the is that iron the, out? Our iron iron out. That's um, a great product, Ray. You can find that at Home Depot or hardware store. It's called Iron Out. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I mean, I would try that just as another alternative. My guess is that the no matter what you do in removing that color, you're still not going to restore the luster and the shine that you have in a tub like that. Uh, the refinish, the home refinishing kits, the do-it-yourself type kits like that, I can't give, I really can't with a clear conscience give that glowing reviews. We've uh, used a couple of those, and boy, it makes it look good, but it is a tremendous amount of work, and I really doubt how long it would actually last. Now, the pros that come out and do all of the, the, the real strong chemical cleaning and the process behind that, certainly much, much better, but I, I've, I've heard prices on those as high as $400 for a tub, so you... You, you, you question whether or not um, right. that's really worth it. But, uh, Joe, any other suggestions on that? Yeah, um, I think I think Danny's right, Ray, in that you might be able to get it clean, but it's going to look new. It probably won't, especially this is an old mm. cast iron, and the enamel finish is just, you know, old yep. and been worn and clean. You could try um, – well, I, I was going to recommend the iron out as well. I use it all the time, and, and it works great. Um, you can try just straight white vinegar – spray it spray the white vinegar on or let it sit 10 minutes uh -huh. and scrub it with a sponge or a scouring pad and i've heard okay. i've not tried this but i heard if you mix hydrogen peroxide and cream of tartar which you can okay. get like in the spice aisle of your supermarket you mix okay. it to a thick like poultice like a um, like a like like maybe like toothpaste consistency and you scrub okay. that into the stain especially stains but you scrub it into the tub wait 10 minutes and scrub it off with some hot water you can try that um maybe try that right. before you go out and buy the iron out okay well, sounds like a possibility there yeah several different options all requiring a little right. elbow grease so grab a hold yep. of it and give it a try ray okay well thank <laughs> you very much okay our pleasure thanks a lot and have a have a great weekend those old tubs like that are pretty but uh you know i actually saw someone take one of the old clawfoot tubs and yeah. cut the side of it out painted it bright red and put a black cushion in it not my style As but a couch? turned it into a couch 
right now, we're joined by Chelsea Lipford Wolf from Checking In with Chelsea. And uh, even though she's out on maternity leave and uh, taking care of little baby Lucy Ann, she uh, she doesn't sit around in a rocking chair. You built you you built an addition to your home. I know we helped you a little bit, but you've been really involved in your bathroom addition. How how do you like it? That's right. Well, I do. I am getting plenty of rocking chair time, just to be clear. But <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> my bathroom is complete. If anyone's been following along on my blog or my social media, I've been talking about this bathroom for several months, and it's done. And actually, the day I was in the hospital, they were here finishing it up. So it was all perfect timing. And um, the reason I'm talking about it is because I have a new video on my website right now about how I stained and installed my bathroom vanity myself. It was a way to save a few bucks um, on a prefabbed um, bathroom vanity. And so um, all the details are on my website, checking on Chelsea.com. Boy, a lot of ways to save money on something like that because, you know, when you buy a surplus, surplus go to one of these big surplus type of places amazing how inexpensive uh, some of the cabinetry can be and like you did with just putting a good quality finish on it and then um, putting the top on it uh, man it really does look good and, and I'll tell you I've gotten a lot of people um, I notice online complimenting you on your the subway tile a little unusual to put that much tile all the way to the ceiling like that I wasn't sure that was really going to look right but man <laughs> it looked it really looks good yeah, it's a, um, a hand-pressed, kind of an aqua blue tile, and we have the shower right next to the vanity, so I thought I would just continue the tile from the shower um, on the wall above the vanity. Since it's such a small space, it was fairly, um, you know, it didn't add a whole lot of cost to extend the tile, and it just has a really big impact when you walk into the room. Hey, Chelsea, uh, first, congratulations on Lucy Ann. I don't know if we've spoken since then. We were very excited to hear that she's joined the world and joined the yeah. the, the family. Um, is this bathroom you're adding, is this just an additional bathroom for the kids? Is this off a bedroom or a bedroom? This is, um, it makes, it's off of um, mine and my husband's bedroom, so it's a master oh, okay. bathroom, and it, it turns it into a master suite. So our house only had one bathroom before this, and so we've wow. added a lot of value to our house with the second bathroom. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it must be must be great to have your own bath. Of course, you're gonna have three kids running around. You don't think they're gonna use the other bathroom <laughs> no. now no, that they have no, a brand no. new bathroom to go to? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so you and Brandon will have to go to the the original bathroom. I guess. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's the kids' bathroom, but it's off of our bedroom. So well, the, it, it's a kid's house. You think you have yeah. any control over anything that's happening? You got three kids. Come on, Joe. Let me live in my little uh, fantasy world. <laughs> Well, 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 it is. Good luck with that. It is well <laughs> equipped for kids, though. There, we've got a, a nice deck out back with a with a child uh, gate on it, so the kids won't right. fall down the stairs. And then got a great swing set outside. Got a beautiful yard, and uh, so um, pretty pretty cool oh, little, yeah. little, little little setup there. And um, <laughs> and as Chelsea mentioned, she's been follow uh, been um, putting a lot of this information out on her blog that you can view at checking in with Chelsea. Dot com, along with a lot of other information there, and as well as uh, plenty of Checking In with Chelsea episodes. Over 50 of them available, right? That's right, yep, right there. Um, I think you click on um, videos right at the top of the website. Good, good, good. Well, we'll let you get back to taking care of little Lucy Ann. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us, and look forward to seeing you soon. All right, bye, y'all. Bye, okay. Bye-bye now. Try to deal with every facet and every aspect of your home. And one that's very important to all of us is the outside, the lawn, the garden, the trees, all of that. And we're so happy to have with us now that uh, Julie Day Jones that joins us about once a month to talk about some of the things you need to think about doing around your home during this time of the year. Julie, always welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Good. Hi, Julie. Hi. Good. Okay, so what should we be doing? Um, you've always been so proactive in the things that you look at, and, and you're quite the planner to be able to plan ahead on some of the things. And, uh, of course, we're always dealing with the diversity of the country, with the South really getting into above 90s, and up north they're still in the uh, low 70s, and you're kind of right in the middle. So what are some of the things that we should be thinking about overall? Well, this time of year, you start preparing for heat. If it's not hot already where you live, you start thinking ahead. A great way to 
um, prepare for the heat and also the overgrowth that happens in the summer, weeds, poison ivy at my house, uh, preparing for that, weeding your beds and putting down mulch is a great way to keep them looking nice but also cooler when the ground starts heating up and it holds in some moisture when we go a few days without rain, just kind of balances everything out. Um, so I would say mulching to start with, um, trimming up things as they get overgrown, kind of controlling your hedges. This is the time of year where your hedge might all of a sudden start to look like um, the Muppets are lined yeah. up at the edge of your yard. <laughs> Muppet hedges, you I have a few of those. Yeah, <laughs> I paid extra for the Muppet hedges. <laughs> you can start uh, trimming those up a little bit on that fresh green growth, and that will help them get in a nicer shape that you want. Um, hey, Julie, and, you, you yeah. had mentioned mulching, the importance of mulching. Do you buy bulk mulch? Do you buy bags of mulch? And do you use standard, like, shredded wood or bark mulch as opposed to some of the newer? And what do you recommend? Well, I like natural products. Um, where I live, there are lots of pine trees. So a oh, okay. lot of people mulch with pine straw because it is renewable and very inexpensive. Um I find pine straw to be a little bit slippery, so I tend to use the ground-up hardwood. There's a great place near my house, and you might have one, too. It's called the Stump Dump, and it's a place <laughs> where the builders and dump. landscapers okay. the stump dump, builders and landscapers take trees that they've pulled out from clearing lots and dead trees and right. all the waste from the side of the road that they pick up, and they grind it up into mulch that you can buy in bulk, and they deliver. So that is usually what I do because I need a lot of it, and that would right. be a lot of plastic bags sure, to sure. haul around. Um, and it's also a way you're helping to recycle within your community that they're, they've picked up all this waste, and now you're reusing it. You know, speaking of recycling, you know, um, years and years ago, I used some of the recycled tires that were created to made into mulch. I wasn't very impressed. I actually had some wires hanging out of it and that kind oh of thing. Goodness. But now but now but now recently we at we, we put out thirty bags of a recycled material and recycled tires and they had this thing shaped just like small pieces of um, bark. They had it available in a dark color as well as a red color. We used the dark color. And I tell you, I'm sold on it. Now, it's a little more expensive because uh, right now you can buy, um, you know, five bags of mulch, regular mulch, for 10 bucks. But this mm -hmm. was actually $8 per bag. Now, wow. it had a 12-year guarantee on the color. Of course, lifetime guarantee on it um, deteriorating because it's a rubber tire. It's not going to deteriorate. So, really, it's um, it, it was pretty impressive. It made me think of like a patio home, a small area um, that you can put it out. And it also, you know, is appealing to a lot of people because it doesn't attract any wood-destroying insects. No, no insects at all, no termites, none of that. So there's a lot of advantages of it. But, boy, if they can figure out how to drive that cost down a little bit, I think it'll take over the whole mulch market. And I think that could be especially great for walkways, places with foot traffic. Yes. Underneath yeah. a swing set, um, uh -huh. places where uh, regular mulch might get broken down more quickly, and you want something that looks very tailored and neat. Um, you know, like a nice crisp border. Right. Seems like that could right. be a good use for a product it, like that, even with the expense. Certainly no shortage of tires. Right, exactly. That's, right. That's, that's what I thought. A great way if you can, you know, like I say, get the manufacturing costs down. And also it tends not to float away. A lot of people talk about how, you know, um, you, you know how people maybe have a sidewalk and that water pours in there and that uh, starts floating away onto their sidewalk and they start losing some of their mulch. And this tends to stay, stay in place more. So uh, that's pretty good. Sure. Sure, a little that, heavier. That's pretty good. Um, any, any, anything else quickly that we need to uh, think about right now to really be proactive homeowners? Well, I think this is the perfect time of year if you don't compost to start because you have lots of clippings, you have grass clippings, you also have all the summer vegetables coming in, all those peelings, all those stalks and greenery coming off of your veggies. It's a perfect time to start a compost pile in your backyard. You've got lots to add to it. And you'll be amazed how quickly you get results. That's a great that's a great thought. And I'll tell you what, you should go to todayshomeowner.com and put in 
composting, and you'll see several different ideas that we've shared with you over the years that makes it a lot easier than you might think. Julie Day Jones, our garden enthusiast, and always happy to have you on to kind of point us in the right direction for the area right outside our back door. You take care, and we'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. That's great, though, to think about that, and you think about the different ways of mulching, and you think about, uh, and composting really is a great idea. A lot of people, you know, I think have misunderstandings about that, that it can be, you know, a smelly mess, or it can right, attract right. insects, or things like that, but boy, you can, you, you'd be surprised how quickly those things can decompose. Yeah, you just have to follow the directions, you know, go online and get some tips. You know, you want to keep it wet. You want to make sure you're not putting in any animal products as far as like bones or meat or anything like that because it's going to attract all kinds of critters. But, yeah, it breaks down really quick, and they have all kinds. I mean, it could just be literally a pile out back of your house. Or you could fence it in, and, of course, they do make um, these bins mm-hmm. that – you can turn, it has a big crank on it, so you can turn it, mix it really easily. So, yeah, if you're into composting, you could certainly do it. That's right. We also want to remind all of you each and every week, we really feel privileged to be able to do what we do, to be able to share with you a lot of the information that we've picked up over the years. We just love this stuff. Uh, Joe and I both are doing projects all the time around around our house and uh you know, yes, we have a honeydew list on our refrigerator, but do. it changes all the time. So, uh, you know, as our wives would say, we sure are lucky wives. Wouldn't they say that, Joe? Who says that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, What's you that? mean, Marley, you don't, you don't hear I've that never all the that. time? <laughs> well, maybe they don't express it. Maybe she it. says that when I'm out of the house. Yeah, maybe that's maybe they saying. don't express it, but we know what they mean. No, they, they're they lovely. Both We're both very lucky Absolutely. With, our, with our wives. Well, I tell you what, let's try another simple solution of the week. Joe has a pocket full of them all the time. He can pull one out. Pull one out and share one with us here, Joe. Okay, hang on. Let me get my pants. Yeah. Now, here we go. <laughs> Here's how to store half-filled cans of paint. All right? So this is so the paint stays fresh until the next time you want to use it. Because if the paint can might be half filled with paint but it's also half filled with air and it's Uh that air that can cause problems so before replacing the can lid here's what you do take a large sheet of plastic food wrap you know saran wrap whatever and tear off a piece and press it down inside the can you want to very carefully set it down you can use a paint stick or something to push down what you want to do is lay it right on the top layer of paint and then press it against, press the plastic against the sides of the can this is inside the can right then put the lid back on and very carefully store it on a shelf. You don't want to shake it too much because you don't want to disturb the plastic. You set that, set it on the shelf. What happens is that plastic will seal out most of the air and keep the that top layer of paint from turning into a thick film. Um, and that's all you need to do. And then when you go to reuse the can, just take off the lid and very carefully peel out and discard the plastic, and you should find the paint as fresh as when it, as when it was new. And, boy, that would work on a quart can. You could do that on a gallon yep. can. What Varnish a, what a, it works great on. Yeah, what a great Not idea. That's so frustrating. You know, you, you make the, the effort to hold on to this half gallon of paint because you want to touch up something. Right. You seal up the top of it really, really well, and then it just still has separation and that thick skin over the top of it, which is never good. That's a, that's a great simple solution just to lay that um, plastic wrap right down in there that's another thank you that's a great one and you can um, actually see a lot of these over almost 500 of them by going to today's homeowner.com slash simple solution hey this is father's day weekend certainly hoping you're taking good care of your father those of us like uh, joe and i that don't have our fathers anymore wish we could pick up the uh, phone and call them right now so remember that make sure you uh, talk to them make sure you take good care of them and uh, a lot of times all they want is just to see your face so make sure or you just get... a phone call that's just right or a phone if call can't if you can't you, make right. it by there because that's a important time uh, being a father now uh, joe and i both uh, having kids uh, it's a pretty special weekend, so um, I'm I'm sure I'll be getting those phone calls. And uh, I like cards. I like uh, yeah, uh, silly so few, so mu- silly seldom. musical cards. <laughs> yeah, it's so seldom you get cards anymore. You I know. know. Like, like Facebook is great because you have a thousand people wish you happy birthday, but you don't get a single card. I know. And my I mother know. still sells yeah, sending I know, cards, I know but she yeah. sends them like nine weeks in advance. So Did, by the time I I don't even remember I got my birthday card because she, she sends she, it so early. Is she still slipping that five dollars in there to take care of everything? No, she's taking yeah. it out. Yeah. Oh, really? Going to the casino. Oh boy. 
Now it's time for our podcast question of the week, and you can certainly send us your question by going to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Pat has been listening to our podcast, and we appreciate that, but she has a question here. I have a tile floor, and it's been down for a a number of years. I want to change the color of the grout, so my question is, can I cover the old grout with a new color of grout without removing the old grout? Great question, Pat, and what you can do there, first of all, you got to get it good and clean, and um, using a a, a good grout cleaner is one way, using an oxygen bleach is another way, and also use Using baking soda and hydrogen peroxide and an old toothbrush is another very proven way to get that grout good and clean. Allow it to dry and then you can use a quality grout stain. And by using that stain, you can change the color of it considerably. And it's a very, very easy project. I would suggest two coats and I would suggest putting a sealer over it after those two coats. Sounds like a lot of work depending on how large the floor is, but boy, it can really look good. And that's a good little light remodeling project that somebody can do to just about any tile floor. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd recommend using an artist brush. They come in various widths from like eighth inch all the way up to quarter or half inch. And I've used them to apply clear sealers. We can certainly apply grout stain. And by the way, when you go to buy grout stain, it's typically called colorant. I'm not really sure why it's not called Uh stain, but it's usually called grout colorant. And uh, Custom Building Products has one that I've used before called Grout Renew. Yeah, yeah. And it comes in, I think, 40 colors or something crazy like that. Uh So you'll probably find one that that will match whatever the color is you want to change. And Custom Building Products is available at just about every Home Depot in the country, and you can go to custombuildingproducts.com to uh, check out all the things they have. We certainly appreciate you being with us. We love being with you, and uh, we, of course, uh, want you to be able to reach out to us with any of those questions. And again, that's todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. And if you get a chance, uh, write us a little uh, favorable review. That has really worked well. We appreciate all the great reviews we got this week. That's moving us up the podcast channel there so that more people can enjoy the Today's Homeowner podcast. We enjoy it. Certainly hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast and we'll see you next week. I'm Danny Lippert along with Joe Truini. Thanks again.